is when men come out of the cave, they're feeling good, they've forgotten all problems, they come out of the cave, and then they get slapped on the hand for being in the cave too long. Well, now there's a problem, he's got to go back to the cave to get out of emotional reaction, okay? So it's... Thank you so much for joining us again on Second Act TV. I'm so happy to welcome back Dr. John Gray, the author of the best-selling, best-known relationship book of all times, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. John, thanks so much for staying over and talking with us again. Happy to do it. It was a pleasure. <laughs> well, today's, today's topic, this is uh, this is a big one for me. I just uh, actually just recently had an occurrence with this where I said, "God, if John saw this, he would be he would not be happy with me." <laughs> and that is understanding what cave time is for a man, why it's important for a man, and and well, and in turn, why it's so important for a woman to be able to talk and be heard, you know, two of which are a bit diametrically opposed that causes all sorts of issues in a relationship. So what I'd like to do is spend this segment on having you explain, and you do it better than anyone, what is cave time, what do we need to know, and, and you know, what, what do we do to get through it successfully? So I'm, this is like iconic men are from Mars, women are from Venus, yeah. it started back in the was back in the 80s I started talking about men in their caves and now it's part of our our whole society now yeah. is men are in their cave you know every man cave thing and whatever and there's a lot to say about the cave and so I'm glad we're just going to focus on that and I have to say after I wrote men are from Mars and millions of people were reading that book and I'd be in the airports so always people come up to me and if a man came up to me they were the most who would come up to me because usually women don't want to disturb my space. They have more respect and mm. boundaries. And the men, not that men don't, but men understood me as a man. I love hearing results. Okay, so they know he's going to love when I tell him this. You know, because so, <laughs> uh, we're men, we really realize that. And and usually it was the case where where couples would be divorced and then get back together after reading that book. Not that everybody reads a book gets out to half marriage, but these guys would say, man, I got to go tell them we were divorced. We got kids and everything. I just heartfelt. Thank you, man. And so th there'd be that story. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, not as many women came up to me, but when women did, the first thing they would say, and what men would say is, you know, I learned that when she's talking, you don't have to fix it every time. Just ask questions and listen. Okay. It's so much easier than what I thought. So they were all saying that. Now, what the women would say to me when they would talk to me, they'd say, my husband, he ignores me and I take it personally and I don't realize he's just doing his man thing. Men need to do this. Now, at that time, I did it from the point of view, well, men are different and we have to understand those differences. And the people who love that book saw the examples that I was giving. Oh. Now, today we live, there's social engineering us to all be the same and that you're sexist if you say we're different. And so... There's a lot of uh, confusion about, is this really just the social engineering of the past? And now we can engineer it so we're all the same? Or are we actually really different? Now, when the Supreme Court lady <laughs> was being interviewed just recently, they asked her, well, can you define a woman? And she said, uh, I think you have to <laughs> talk to a biologist. Well, this book is the study of biology of men and women, okay? So it was right in time for that. <laughs> but, I know, it's ridiculous. By understanding biology, it does put an exclamation point to every idea that I talked about in Men Are From Mars. And then even with that knowledge, I was able to go beyond uh, beyond just those ideas and, and adapt the message of men and women are different to wanting to help women who are more masculine these days come back to their female side, what men can do without negating their male side. That's good, you got both sides, you know, do two is better. But for men, now we get to the cave, okay? <laughs> the cave is a man's function is primarily testosterone oriented in his body. His body, he's here. He has a spirit, which is female. I can be feminine, I have feminine qualities, but my body has to have enough testosterone. Otherwise, I will be stressed. Otherwise, I will be victim, I will be feel victimized, I will feel negative, I will become angry or I become numb, I become less interested in sex. So you wanna avoid all of that and the most powerful way for men to raise the 
their testosterone, keep it up, is the cave time. So think mm -hmm. of a man as a, like a, he goes into action, he's solving problems, solving problems, that raises testosterone. And the most powerful way for men to raise their testosterone was to feel someone depends on me so I can't just become a lazy bum. I got to get up in the morning. I got to make money. I got to solve problems if I'm going to, if I want to have love in my life. So th these are the options. The society had a one way of being. And now we have a new way of being, which is we can both be masculine and feminine. So the ideas of beyond Mars and Venus are that men can learn how to open a woman's heart. Women can learn how to give men the space so he can rebuild his testosterone. And that's yeah. what the cave is. Whenever a man detaches from emotion, when he detaches from intimacy, when he detaches from anything personal mm -hmm. and just is on his own, that's testosterone producing. Yeah. So, I mean, what you're saying is, if I'm understanding everything correctly, is that the need to pull away is a biological need that men have, well, to, to recharge their testosterone. It has really nothing to do with wanting to get away from you, from me. That, that I feel abandoned and hurt. Personally, if you take it personally, you will feel abandoned and hurt if you understand you know, that this is just the nature of men. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was just counseling a woman who, whose husband started working at home, drove her crazy. She didn't want to cook for him anything. She's an entrepreneur herself, but she also likes coming home and preparing a meal and cooking for him. It's a very feminine thing. That's one of the ways she balances it. Not everyone has to do that. But she said as soon as he started working at home, just like I don't want to cook for him or anything. She needs the space too, because see, mm -hmm. she does not wear of. She doesn't need to detach. She needs to detach to looking to him for fulfillment and look to other sources of fulfillment. Mm -hmm. See, whenever you put all your eggs in one basket, it's you can't be satisfied. We need. It's literally like as human beings, we have different emotional needs, and and and, and intimacy is just one of them. It's like vitamin D. Uh, but you need vitamin C, vitamin E, A, B, C, you know, all seven B vitamins. You know, this is, and what, what do those look like? They're, they look like independence. Okay, so women do need to do things that make her happy. Ideally, they're things that produce estrogen. It's self-love. Self-love is doing anything for yourself as a woman that produces estrogen. See, estrogen is what you're missing today as women. So mm -hmm. self-love is, I. what do you enjoy doing? Go do those things, okay? What do you like to do that doesn't produce any stress? Do that. That's called self-love vitamin. Then another self-love, another vitamin is friendship. We all need friendship, and that and women have a greater need for friendship. You know, men can have one or two friends, and they're done. Uh, but women do have a greater need for friendship. So having different friends, having bonding experiences, other women you can talk to. Then there's spirituality. Uh, we have a, a need for a higher power, some kind of higher power. It could be personal growth even, mm -hmm. but you know, it's good to have spirituality. These are all like just categories where you can have mm -hmm. huge different variety. We're all different, but what feels good to you as a woman? And the tendency is what produces the most uh, dopamine. Dopamine is the addictive brain chemical, is sex. So when you have sex with a man, you have the biggest dopamine hit. So it's very easy to get addicted to the surge of estrogen that you ex and dopamine that you experience in sex. So nature figured it out. So men, that surge of dopamine and estrogen forces him to pull away, to detach in order to rebuild testosterone, thus freeing you to, to go out and find other sources of love and support, not sexual, but other types of things. Mm -hmm. And you see women take it personally, but imagine that he just gloms onto you after sex and just doesn't want to leave you. He wants to follow you around. You'll quickly go, no. Like what we do. Yeah. So, yeah. But because yeah. you don't understand the cave, when a man detaches, pulls away, he's actually solving problems that have no stress. That's called a hobby. Okay, so you know, it used to be on your resume, what's your hobby? You know, like rich people, they all play golf, you know, this expensive hobby, you know, a lot of prestige in that one. But what you're doing is you're still solving problems. The whole thing is I got to get this ball into that hole <laughs> with this club. You know, it's just like it's such a silly thing. <laughs> like We make such a big deal about it. But it's very relaxing for a man because he's he's and also can be very frustrating. But it's the way his way of sharing feelings <laughs> with another yeah. man is damn miss that shot <laughs> having to internalize all the frustrations and the disappointments and concerns and embarrassment all the four primary emotions are there when a guy plays golf but any any hobby is a place where a man feels totally yeah. responsible for solving problems and he's yeah. good at it
you know, like some some people have hobbies and I, I like golf. I'm not good at it. So it's not my hobby. It's too much stress for me. You know, <laughs> <laughs> my, my hobby is meditation. I'm a master meditator yeah. and it's not personal. It's not about my wife. It's not about my children. It's not about the my gardening or anything like that. It's just me doing something where I'm solving a problem. Cave time is a distraction to help you forget your problems. Mm -hmm. You see, a man's whole testosterone situation, and he needs 10 times more than a woman. He needs 20 times more to sustain commitment, love, affection, warmth, uh, and erections. You know, it has to be high testosterone to be in an intimate relationship. If you're a low testosterone man, uh, you tend to be attracted to porn, strangers. You can't be turned on to a real woman. You can't last in a relationship because your testosterone isn't there enough. Why that is so is because when you love someone and you're familiar with them, estrogen levels are going higher and higher, which is a good thing as long as your testosterone is higher. Okay? Mm -hmm. So there's a, a dance there that we want to find. Men need to take cave time, mm -hmm. and women often feel hurt by it, and therefore yes. sensitive men won't take their cave time. You know, I was talk, talking to a man the other day. He said, you know, I'm trying to explain to my girlfriend. I just need to go fishing. You know, I can't be with her all the time. You know, fishing used to be one of the best things because you're, you're sitting there and you're just quiet. You know, you got the thing out there, you're doing your thing. So you're doing something, you've learned a skill, you're doing it, and no talking is happening. And sometimes talking does happen, but nobody has to talk. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the whole thing. It's just a quiet time for men. That's why, you know, in Father Knows Best, these old shows, you see Father reading the newspaper. He's looking at other people's problems, not talking to his wife about hers. He's got the paper up like this, so she, he can't, she can't even see him. <laughs> he's got a little cave, he's reading the news. <laughs> And when you hear other people's problems, you can forget yeah. your own. Exactly. When you have little challenges, uh, your hobbies, you're basically doing something you're good at, but you're solving problems. Also, another version of cave time, which is forgetting everything. That's the whole point of meditation is to forget everything. Mm -hmm. And then your body will rebuild your testosterone levels. And then you've got a wife who's upset and she wants to talk about things. And he'll say to you by mistake, he says, well, honey, just forget it. Don't worry mm -hmm. about it. It's no big deal. No problem. See, for us, it's minimize, minimize, minimize. Right. For a woman, if she does that seriously, she'll suppress her emotions. And then when her emotions do come up, or actually what happens when women suppress their emotions, the logical left brain has to find reasons for those emotions. Yeah. Right. And that's where, that's where you see your brain becomes more critical, more demanding. We mm -hmm. tell ourselves these stories because the emotions have built up inside. Because in the work day, there's no room to feel your emotions, say, and you can't talk about your emotions, you can't be emotional, you have got to detach, you know, that's what the workplace is about. It's about not me, it's about you. It's not me, it's you. There's no space for me to tell my clients, you know, I'm having a hard day today, you know, and she says, oh, what's the matter? And then I can have a therapy session and share my feelings. <laughs> you can't do that. You know, it's about, it's about selflessness. Selflessness produces yeah. testosterone and yeah. selfishness in a positive sense Mm -hmm. is producing estrogen. So when we look at challenges that women face and men say, face, women today, they all the time saying, oh, I got another narcissistic man. And we need to understand these terms. If you actually study real narcissism, mm -hmm. they're not narcissistic men. They're men who are just not being motivated. Okay, a narcissist, you can't motivate them outside of themselves. Mm -hmm. But so many times when a woman says he's narcissistic, I immediately go, oh, she's codependent. You see, mm -hmm. codependence, it's another phrase simply understood is making other people's needs more important than your own. Mm -hmm. So if you're codependent women, so many are, making other people's needs more important than yours, mm -hmm. what will happen is you will bring out the man, even if it's he's potentially narcissistic or totally generous, if you're a, a codependent woman, you'll bring out his selfish side because you're always giving to him. Men are not going to refuse gifts. We're not stupid. Mm -hmm. Is that, yeah, go right ahead and do it. But we don't, we need to be motivated by seeing there's a need over there yeah. And then I rise to the occasion, literally rise mm -hmm. to the occasion. And what's happened in our culture today, the, the, the culture used to uh, social, create a society where men always felt needed because women didn't make money. Men would provide that what women needed. Yeah. And it hasn't sunk in yet that women are still women, but their needs have changed. Yeah. The primary, when a woman can fulfill her, her needs for money, survival, security, new needs emerge for well-being and those, those needs are the need for emotional fulfillment and a great part of that is romance help around the house and the most yeah. important is communication and don't yeah. start with help around the house because men are trained that doesn't pay 
So basically, he didn't see his father doing it. He's not motivated to do it. But you can teach him something new and then bring in all those things as well, because you do need help around the house if you got a family. You, you do need you, what you need primarily if you're both making money is you need a man to help bring you back to your female side. But when he's in his cave, that's when you have to come back to your female side on your own. And when women say, what do I do? I say, yes. have a life. <laughs> yeah, the I, w I was just going to say the worst thing, and that's probably a point you'd want to drill home is is follow them into the cave, or yes, that's you know, that's, so so. There's a lot to the cave, and I, I sort of built around the cave in our interview on this cave thing. There's a lot more to it. If a man goes into his cave, and you go into this cave by by not knowing, you know, you're you're going in. The, what's the matter? Uh, yes. Is something bothering you? Did I say something? Is, is it that problem at work? He's yeah. trying to forget all that, and now you're getting him to remember it <laughs> at a time where he's trying to forget it in order to rebuild his 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 power. And then he can reflect on those things when it's appropriate for him to do. So don't ask him questions at that time. That's hard to do. Even in a conversation, it's not a full cave, but men can sort of dart back into their cave for a moment in a sense. You're having a conversation with a man, and you'll be talking about something that's a challenge. And he'll, he has to now analyze that challenge. Is it something he can do for you? Is it some piece of advice he can give to you? Is that challenge meaning he failed you in some way? There's a whole inventory, which we have to sort of mull it over. Mulling it over is just simply detaching temporarily. And at that point, women make the mistake of going, what are you thinking? What are you feeling? What's going on? You know, and now you don't want to know what he's thinking at that time. <laughs> but you have to realize you're coming from a place of feeling not insecure is he mad at right. you you want to correct yourself right. you don't want to do it wrong or you're hurt. I boring you mm -hmm. uh is something the matter here do we have big problems need to see a therapist <laughs> oh, whatever goes on a lot right. can go on when you don't understand something what just happened is he disconnected when mm -hmm. women disconnect it's primarily because they don't feel safe mm -hmm. they don't feel loved they don't feel supported or they might right. feel threatened and or they might want to punish you that's another mm -hmm. one so you pull away, pull back your love. These are sort of instinctive reactions to yeah. protect you from being hurt. So I'm gonna pull back. Well, he sometimes doesn't even notice that. You know, he, you, know you say to a woman, <laughs> is there something the matter? She says, no, he says, oh good, I thought something was the matter, I can watch my TV show now. Then you feel like, see, he doesn't care at all. He's oh, just, I that say, is so, 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 so true. You know, there's one other thing I'd but wanna here, make I wanna give the solution and then- oh, go, go, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. So when he pulls away, all you have to do is simply say, it's a wonderful technique. My daughter Lauren came up with it in her class for women only. And it's uh, when he detaches a little bit, you just look at him and you say, oh, you're thinking about it, right? That's it. He'll say yes. And now you will feel connection. You will feel that connection. Whenever someone says yes, you feel a connection. And all those fears, concerns, worries, taking it personally goes away. And when he's in his cave, you just can say, if you get pushed, if your button gets pushed, you just, you need some alone time, or you just need to be in your cave for a while. And he'll yes. say, yeah, mm -hmm. and do it in a positive sense. Because another problem with the cave is when men come out of the cave, they're feeling good. They've forgotten all problems. They come out of the cave and then they get slapped on the hand for being in the <laughs> cave too long. Well, now there's a problem. He's got to go back to the cave to get out of emotional reaction. Okay, so it's, you don't want to train him to get punished. <sighs> When he comes back out of the cave, and it's a funny joke with this, it's like when we had this little puppy, I've got a new one now, but this is 30 years ago, with our other puppy, you'd say, come, it was a, a, a stray dog, okay, so we, we got, so he had no training at all, and we'd say, yeah. come, it would just look at you, <laughs> and sometimes it would back up, wow. even, it had some kind of brain problem, and so Bonnie would say, come, 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 and it, it, finally, when the dog came, she'd say, bad dog, bad dog. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what you're training your dog to come and then you say bad when they do it no even if you're so frustrated come 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 when they finally do what you want you say then good you dog say, good dog yeah. good dog and Great you know example. Yeah. so you, we want to reward as much as possible and have less timeouts yeah. when you come out of the cave men and couples should have a like a, a, a behavior she needs to know if he went to the cave because he was mad at her okay that can happen okay whenever a man is emotional estrogen goes up he needs cave time to pull away and if you've both been you know i call it machine gunning each other with criticism and judgments and hurt all that stuff just a waste of time doesn't have any productive value animals do it we can learn to get beyond it it's our reactive brain we can learn to just suck it up at those times and go do something that makes you feel good and when you're out of the cave there needs to be kind of a ritual you do 
this is my just I used just to when I'm out of the cave, I would just come and stroke Bonnie's hair. I stand around her. I would start offering to do things, uh, do little things, fix up, change the light bulb. She, you know, she sees me engaged, and she can relax and go, "Okay, the dragon is gone." Uh, she said, "I just remember what a huge difference it made for me to spend less time in the cave, and that was to make the cave really an okay thing." And it happened one day when we were a bit of a bit of an argument. I said, "Look, I don't want to argue about this. I just need to think about it first and walked away. Mm -hmm. And then I came back, uh, I don't know if it was that day or the next day, and I just was being very friendly and nice with her. And she says, John, I just want to thank you for going to your cave and protecting me from the dragon. Because uh, I think every person has a dragon inside once you escalate. Uh -huh. And she just knew I was protecting her. And once it became a good thing, I went to my cave. It was so easy to go, take a time out and come back out not escalating anymore. Many men don't always come out of the cave. That is a problem because it feels so good in there and he doesn't feel needed outside the cave. So that's where if he's, your husband's in there more than 30 minutes or an hour in the evening, what you want to do is when he's in the cave, you say something non-demanding like this. Listen, when, I know you're in the cave, but when you have time, I need your help. It'll only take a few minutes. Oh, I Imagine, need your help. Right? I need your help and it'll only be a few minutes, like just 10 minutes max. Any man can hold 10 minutes and go, yeah, I can do that. Okay, I, well, even if I really like this show, I can turn, put it on pause, whatever. <laughs> 10 minutes. And then what you want to do is use that time to help him connect with you more. That's the thing. He just needs to connect with you more. Mm -hmm. And that's by doing uh, what we could do, a whole show on this one, but it's called the Venus Talk, where you just talk about your day, what's frustrating, what's disappointing, what your concerns are, and particularly if you did or said anything that day, which is embarrassing. Men love when women say, I'm so embarrassed I did this. It makes him feel like he's not inferior to you. Okay. Interesting. It's the most most invulnerable thing you can say is, I feel so embarrassed. It, it, embarrassment makes you look not so competent. See, yeah. competence is your male side. Okay, competence is your male side. And the more competent you are, men to balance with you and connect with you, they'll go to their insecure side. Whenever women are very masculine, men will go over to their female side, uh, which doesn't have a lot of confidence and confidence. So your confident, confident side, that's a woman. You have a male side. That's your male yeah. side. Nothing wrong with that. But when you show that I'm embarrassed or I said this or I'm worried about this, he will tend to, and they're worried, he'll say, oh, don't worry, whatever. Oh, no, no, I just need to talk about this. I just feel so happy I can tell somebody and you, gosh. And then whenever you go from any type of negativity like that, negative emotions, you go to positive emotions. So you always let him see this transformation of, yeah, stress today, but now I'm, I'm feeling just so grateful because we've got this house or our kids are so wonderful, my job, I love it, you know? And he'll kind of go, you love your job, but you just complained about your job. He has to learn to adapt to a mind that can go both left and right. Women's brains can do that more than men's. Yeah. So then shift to what I'm grateful for. I'm certainly grateful to you for listening. It feels so good. I don't have to come home and be alone. And I feel happy because now I get to do this and tomorrow I'm gonna go do this. Let him see the happy part of you. And let him see, I'm excited about something. That's the opposite of fear. It's, you know, and I'm excited that this weekend we're going to go do this, go to this lake. We're going to go Lake Tahoe. And I'm really proud of myself because at work, you know, I did this and this and this. And I'm continuing to, to, to accomplish this or I did this or I did that. See, it's, so let me go over. These are, they took me a long time to figure out an easy pathway for a woman to be emotional, pull a man in because you bring him to his female side. You see, when he's in his cave, he's detaching mm -hmm. from his female side. So he's been in there for a while when he's ready. And sometimes you say, oh, when you get a chance, he'll forget because he's distracted, right? So he always has to go pee. And so when he gets up to go pee, you just simply say, <laughs> oh, while you're up, would this be, would this be a good this time? Be time. Uh, I need, it will only take a few minutes. It's not a big deal. These are powerful phrases. It's not a big deal. <laughs> it will only take a few minutes and you can help me. And then he starts to realize that helping you is helping you come back to your female side mm -hmm. and connecting with him and it's that this is and he's out now he's out of the cave it's kind of like a once he's pointing in another direction if you want to spend some time do other things that's the time to ask for what you want or hey while we're out while you're out of your cave can we talk about what we want to do next weekend always give men a goal to look forward to and also for a woman to look forward to a time where she's going to be queen where she's going to get a lot of attention and affection and warmth so that's her job is to let him know three things you'd like to do next week and talk about it. And don't ever ask him, what would you like to do? 
You say, these are some things I like to do next weekend. That's what romance is. Romance is not <laughs> doing things for him. It's having him create a space for him to do things for you. for you. That feels good for you. And if you're happy and positive, that's good for him. Yeah. That, that's, that's the dance. Yeah. Well, obviously, we can talk about this forever. These are just such important and interesting topics. And you always put such an interesting spin on everything. <laughs> I want to ask you one more question as our last yeah. question, because that was so important to me when I just read it just it changed my whole day. When I uh, heard you say, I think I don't know if I read it or you said it in an interview, but resentment that we become, uh, women become resentful when men go in their caves and it can build and build and build. And you said that what we have to learn is that resentment is not about them. They, they didn't do anything wrong. It's, it, it's here. That's something we have to change. It made so much sense. Yeah, let's talk about that because see, resentment nobody wants to admit this, but it's actually envy or jealousy. <laughs> he yeah. gets to do what he wants. I hear it all the time. He gets to do what he wants. Yeah. I don't. Well, that's, that's your problem is that mm -hmm. you're not doing what you want because you're a little right. bit addicted to having him be mm -hmm. attentive to you. Yep. Uh, let me give an example of not necessarily resentment, but I've got this puppy, right? And the puppy has attended. They're very oral and she wants to do her teeth on me all the time, yeah. not a toy or anything. She wants me whenever I'm sitting down watching TV. If I'm doing anything <laughs> else, okay, and I'm busy doing, she has yeah. no problem. It's when I sit down. So it's like when a man goes to his cave, you just come after him. <laughs> he shouldn't do that. So it's a hab It's like an addictive habit of depending too much on him mm -hmm. for your happiness. And I, yep. I'll give a little plug for my, my daughter Lauren's class. Yeah. For women only is which is how to get your me time. That means when a man's in his cave, how do you create a life? How do you pull him out of the cave? How are the benefits that you can he'll learn to experience by coming back out of the cave sooner? These are all things in her class. And, and soon we're going to have another class. We've been spending a year putting this thing together, okay. simply called Understanding the Cave. Uh, oh, this I love it. Subject. We're just touched on it yeah. today. You know, yeah. there's all these different what ways about the cave, to get them in the cave, out of the cave, wrong cave, because some men are, are too feminized at home. That means they're pout, they complain, they need to have cave time. Yeah. So you have to create a space where you start taking cave time. I just need to spend some time, My I need me time. And he's like forced, and he'll pout, like a woman will pout when a man <laughs> he's on his female side, like he didn't spend no time for me. You have to be merciless, you know? <laughs> and there's things you can say that will help make that yeah. transition easier. Because usually whenever a man is needy or whiny or complaining, which just is so disgusting to a woman, but she can't say it, you know, you disgust me because you know, <laughs> can't say it will hurt his feelings. So that there's, there's ways that you can break through your own fears of leaving him alone at those times. Uh, even, even though I wasn't a pouty guy, but one day I was in a really bad mood. And I remember I, I just sort of meditate and then curl up like I'm in the womb or something, some disaster article. You know, for Minute from Mars, I never received a positive print article. That's how much the narrative in the world was at that time. Uh, you just can't talk about gender differences. I was always, you know, negative things saying about me. Yeah. It was just because I got to be, had an infomercial where I got to say what I said and people could hear it. Uh, I did get get some national media for a while, but in the year 2000, I was no longer allowed on national TV. I'm one of the first people that was canceled. I was the biggest selling author <laughs> in the world during the decade of the 90s. And it was about the time, one of the most influential books in history yeah. when USA Today said that. And some force came down and said, he's out of here. We don't write articles on him. We don't do videos with him. There's so, you know, when you look at New York City, you've got so many strong, independent women who are unhappy with men. And here mm -hmm. I'm writing a book that says men are wonderful, women are wonderful. When we don't see that, it's our own fault. Right. Yeah, I and don't get that either. Yeah. So one don't. other thing with the cave, I just want women to know, is that you can spend a weekend romantic vacation with your husband, or you go to Hawaii, or you go to some camp out, and you're there together all the time. And it's wonderful. You're intimate, you're sharing, you're loving. For women, that's connection. That's a lot mm -hmm. of estrogen being produced. And so she's on a real high. He's also on a high. But his estrogen has gone too high. Mm -hmm. So now he's going to need a lot of time to rebuild his testosterone. Mm -hmm. And, and this, this is so you're thinking our relationship has gotten to a new height. 
He's back. He ignores you. He's busy working. He doesn't notice you when he comes home. He's in his cave longer. What is going on? You think we went to this high level, but also cave time can be increased for a while. If you spend like a wonderful weekend together or really have great lovemaking or something, the next day he's ignoring you and you go, what happened? What happened? Is he got so much estrogen, he needed more time to be in his cave and pull away and do his things that are testosterone producing. Interesting. So interesting. John, thank you. Thank you so much for your time as always. There's still a million other things I want to talk to you about. I'm going to take some notes and I'm going to call you back and have you back if you will. (laughs) Sounds great. And there's a lot about when he's in the cave, how to bring him out. But I look forward to people being able to take our new course, our new course, which is going to be understanding men. But the one right now is how to get your me time, which is when he's in his cave, what do you do and how do you get him out of the cave? Yeah, I I will link to that. I'll, I'll, I'll pull up a graphic on that. I should also say that, you know, you have, I think you held it up a minute ago, the Beyond Mars and Venus is the update to your original iconic book. Uh, I've read lots of it. Thank you so much. Thank you <laughs> so much. Well, and thank you. And uh, again, I'll look forward to seeing you again soon on Second Act TV. <laughs> If you haven't done so already, please be sure to subscribe to our channel. The button is right over here. Just click on through to YouTube, and when you see the little bell right next to the subscribe button, hit that too. We'll notify you every time we launch a new video. See you next time.